Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about how to create a new um, autoresponder or a new mailing list. And what I've done here is I've logged into my Aweber account, as you see. And over here to the left hand side it shows us the list that I'm currently working with. So right now it's my marketing tools today list. And right beside it you will see a very small link that says add new. So we're going to add a new mailing list by clicking on it. Once I've done that, it will show a list of all of our different uh, mailing lists that we have, including uh, ones I, I can deactivate, but I don't want to do that right now. Instead, I want to create a new one, so we're going to click here on the list that says Create List. Okay, now first of all, I want to show you here this uh, orange message box. This is kind of like an error box. Aweber is going to continue to show you uh, different informational boxes like that until you have fulfilled all the minimum requirements that they have for a list. So you want to uh, make sure that you read those and do all the steps. In this case here, we have a success that we have created a new autoresponder, but we need to fill out some of the details. Now it has given a, a default name, but we want to change that. And so I'm just going to call this one a uh, list here. I'm just going to call it a practice list. And now one of the things that I have found is that it shows up here in green and it tells us that the list name practice is available, which is, is a helpful tool. I have found that in past experience that this is not always accurate. Many times I have selected a, a name for a list that said was available. Then when I went to save it, uh, it said that it wasn't, that it was already taken. So uh, don't always believe what you see here. So whenever I make up a list, I generally like to add just a couple numbers after it just to make sure that it's going to be unique. Definitely you want to put in a short description because when you start adding a lot of different mailing lists, uh, you can sometimes get confused at, as to uh, which ones are being used uh, for for which websites. You may even want to put in your URL here of the website that you're using that list on. Now these two options here are checked off by default. I always just leave it there. This one here is pretty important though, multiple unsubscribe. Because a person can be subscribed to more than just one mailing list of yours, when they go to unsubscribe, if this is checked off, it allows them the option of being able to also unsubscribe from your other mailing list. I strongly suggest that you leave that checked off because uh, if you disable it, that could be in violation of the CAN spam law as you see there. This here uh, enables tracking of your HTML message open rates if you use HTML, um, but the, I never use that so we're just going to go ahead and leave it there. Okay, from here now we're going to continue on to the next section and which is the company branding. Of course, you can put in your information here, your company name, a logo, a divider line, and this is the information that will show up at the header of your H of your unsubscribe page. And you can always check out what that looks like by clicking here. It will show you what it looks like. So just for a professional appearance, you probably want to have that filled in there. And then finally, the last section here on creating this, on this particular page of this list, very important, and this is your reply addresses. You have to provide a valid uh, email address uh, to receive from emails and also notification emails. Now, you can have one address that will do both, or you can have separate addresses that one does one and then one does the other. Now, you'll notice that many marketers will use an email address such as uh, no reply at their URL dot com. Uh, maybe because you're using a help desk or something like that. You know, I personally I use a, there's a particular email address that I always use for uh, you know my sites that if I get a reply uh, you know to that address I know it came from my mailing list and so I'm just going to go ahead and put that in there now. And then that's going to be my from and my reply address there. So when I send out an email, when I send out a follow up or a broadcast message, it's going to show that it's from this address. And if somebody clicks reply, then it's going to also reply straight to this address. Now I can also set up an address to receive notifications. Anytime someone subscribes uh, to my mailing list, Aweber will send me a message. 
I also want to have that. Uh, it just gives me a good feeling when my uh, when my email uh, inbox gets uh, loaded up with uh, subscribe uh, messages. I like that. Now here in the name, this is also going to show up in the person's email address as the name in your from spot. And I really suggest that you do something uh, unique with this. A lot of people just type in their name. Well, I don't think that's effective. I think that just helps your email get lost in the clutter of all the e other emails that are out there. So, like for example, one of my uh, email lists, whenever I send it out, I just put a couple of minus signs, a space, and a couple of minus signs there. Just make it, just make it uh, different. Just make it stand out from everybody else. One of my other emails, I'll often uh, put in a little uh, dive-in model, which is one of my uh, you know, models that I preach in, and then I can put in my name after that. I use that on a lot of my lists also too. So just, uh, I suggest here in the name, do something besides your name. Now don't go crazy. Don't go with a you know whole bunch of ridiculous characters and then your name. Uh, but do something to make it nice, make it look professional, and make it look stand, uh, make it stand out. So let me go back to the uh, original one, the one that I normally use. And then, of course, when we're all finished, we're going to click on Save. And once we have saved, we have that list, uh, uh, that mailing list finished. 